so in the first class we we already uh, discussed that uh, uh, formation of n type and p type semiconductor and uh, today we are going to discuss that uh, concept of fermi level okay. so in the fermi level so that uh, is basically defined by a probability distribution function called uh, fermi dirac probability distribution function and is denoted as this one f e is 1 by 1 plus e to the power e minus e f by k t so this uh, distribution function tells how uh, the carriers will be occupied it's, uh, it will be populated okay so then uh, when you are applying some energy which is greater than EF, okay, which is greater than one characteristics energy, so that is called Fermi energy, how the carriers will be populated. Because you know the conduction band, so that is basically a group of discrete energy levels. Okay. So when the carriers are populated, so first the lower value will be populated, followed by the upper energy levels. First the lower band will be populated, followed by the upper uh, levels. Okay. And it is a strong function of a temperature T. Okay. So unlike Fermi direct distribution, so there are some other probability distribution function uh, such as a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution function, and, uh, Bose uh, Einstein distribution function. So they are also uh, different uh, probability distribution function, but for a semiconductor, basically. Uh, the Fermi direct distribution function will give the best description of the probability of uh, occupation of the charge carriers. Okay. And uh, here, uh, so in this equation, if we put E equal to F, so clearly the F will be equal to half 0.5. So we can define this characteristics energy F as a Fermi energy. So it is the energy level. So it is the energy level where the probability of occupancy is just 0.5 because at E equal to EF, the probability became half. Okay. And the graph, the distribution graph is uh, just like this one and uh, for, for different temperature T0 to T3, uh, starting from low temperature to high temperature, if we increase the temperature, the distribution looks like this one. Suppose that uh, T equal to 0K and E less than EF, uh, the energy E is less than EF, then what will happen e less than e f so this term f uh, will be what 1 by 1 plus e to the power uh, minus infinity okay because e minus e f that is a negative and t equal to 0 so this will be minus infinity so it will be 1 by 1 plus 1 by e to the power infinity so 1 by e to the power infinity so this one will be infinite so 1 by infinity it will be 0 and this gives the value 1. So for e less than e f at a very low temperature let a t0 at e equal e less than e f this one okay so this uh, will give a step like uh, distribution and the value of probability will be 1 for this part and similarly for e greater than e f we have uh, this uh, part uh, f equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power infinity. So this whole denominator term will be infinite and so probability function will be 0. So here we got it 0. So this is all about the uh, definition of Fermi level and how we can derive the Fermi level from the Fermi direct probability distribution function. Now the position of Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor and doped semiconductor. The intrinsic semiconductor, so there is no, we are not adding any impurities, uh, so the n equal to phi, so that is equal to ni. So number of free electrons and holes, they are same, they are exactly equal to the intrinsic carrier density. So the position of Fermi level will be exactly at the mid position of the band gap, and it is referred as EI, intrinsic level. So the intrinsic level is the Fermi level in doped semiconductor, uh, sorry, and a pure semiconductor. So EI is equal to EF for EI, uh, pure semiconductor. Similarly for n-type semiconductor, since the conduction band that the majority carriers are electrons and uh, the free electrons are available in the conduction band, so Fermi level shifted towards conduction. So this is the position of Fermi level for n-type doped semiconductor and this position is a function of uh, doping. And this is the intrinsic level EI 
this is, that is the Fermi level of pure semiconductor, intrinsic semiconductor. So this, uh, we can see this shifting. That means when you are adding impurities, n-type impurities, the Fermi level will shift in the upward direction towards conduction band. Okay. So the, the shifting from intrinsic level EI, it is a function of doping controller concentration ND. Higher the value of ND, higher the shifting. That means for a very high value of ND, the Fermi level will be almost overlap state with the conduction band. Similarly, for p-type semiconductor, so the holes are the majority carriers and they are staying in the valence band, so the Fermi level shifted towards valence band. So if EI is the intrinsic level, uh, that is the Fermi level of pure semiconductor EI, so uh, when you are adding the accepted type impurity NA, so what will happen? Uh, the Fermi level will shift in downward towards valence band. Okay, the higher value of NA causes more downward shifting and for a very high value of NA, the Fermi level will be in a overlap state with the valence band. Condition of Fermi level in condition of Fermi level in conductor and insulator. Even no conductor, even no conductor that even no conductor that is conduction and valence band, they are already in overlap state, and uh, plenty of free electrons are available. So EF for conductor EF will be overlapped with conduction band and valence band. So what will happen for insulator? For insulator, you know, there is uh, no free carriers are available in the conduction band. Conduction band is uh, for normal condition. Conduction band is completely empty. Valence band is completely filled. So EF, the Fermi label, is overlapped with valence band. This is the situation. And, 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 now consider one case where a semiconductor is both n-type and p-type doped. Suppose a semiconductor is uh, doped by donut, uh, donut type of doping concentration 10 to the power 17 and uh, at the same time it is doped with accepted type p-type impurities with a doping concentration of 10 to the power 40. So clearly ND is greater than NA. The ND is greater than NA so the semiconductor type will be n-type because the donor concentration is greater than accepted concentration, so semiconductor will be n-type. Now we are going to find out the equilibrium electron and hole concentration. So uh, from the charge conservation or charge neutrality condition, so we can derive that thing. So let us uh, first find out what is the total positive charge. The total positive charge will be uh, that free hole available because uh, we have some free hole because we are adding some impurities, accepted type impurity, which will give some free hole, that is free hole. At the same time, we are adding some donut type impurity. And donut type impurity means, uh, suppose phosphorus, okay, is having five valence electrons. Uh, out of five, four uh, is inside the covalent bond. You know the formation of n-type semiconductor, four inside covalent bond, and this is the free. It is loosely bounded and uh, it behaves like a free electron. So we are taking out one uh, extra electron from this, so it became P plus. Okay, so this is the fixed positive ions. So this is also another one component of this fixed positive charge. So uh, for total positive charge, that is free hole, and the fixed positive ions coming from uh, that donut type, and the concentration will be same as ND. So P plus ND, that is the total amount of fixed positive charge. Okay per cubic centimeter, you can say per volume, okay. Similarly, the total negative charge, that is the free electrons, because uh, we have, uh, we are adding some donor, so it's so a donor means uh, some free electrons will be there. And also similar to this case, uh, here we have some free negative ions, because the boron, let the boron is having valency of three, but to complete the covalent bond, we have added one extra additional electron, is borrowed from some other place, so B, added with one extra electron it became p minus so it is a fixed negative ions so this is the fixed negative ions so this is the n plus na because the concentration will be same as accepted type okay so p plus nd equal to n plus na so they are from charge conservation because the semiconductor the total semiconductor is neutral so p plus nd total positive charge will be equal to total negative charge 
and now from mass Epsilon law, we know this one in P equal to Ni square, so we can substitute the value of N or value of P to find out uh, what will be the value of majority and minority carrier concentration. Let if Nd equal to Na, just like our case, if Nd equal to Na, so here the donor concentration greater than acceptor concentration, so majority is an electron. Because the semiconductor is n type, the majority is electron. And in that case, uh, we need to calculate what is the value of n. Because the majority are electrons. But uh, it is possible that n is greater than nd. So it is a p type. So majorities are holes. In that case, the majority carriers are holes. And in that case, we need to find out what is the value of p. Anyways, the calculation process is same. So here for NP equal to Ni square, you can uh, replace N or replace P. Suppose we are going to find, for this case, we are going to find out the electron concentration, N value. So we need to replace P. We need to substitute P. So P equal to Ni square by N. Then we can put this in this equation here. So we got this equation. Then for the simplification, we got this one, a quadratic equation. And the solution of this quadratic equation is uh, just like this, n equal to this one. Okay, so, and one interesting thing is that, and see, yeah, since it is a quadratic equation, there will be two root, one plus and minus root will come here. So plus, minus, both are possible. But here we consider plus and we, we just discard the minus, because, see, uh, if n equal to nd, so if the donor and acceptor concentration are same, so P will be equal to N. It is same as your intrinsic carrier concentration. So P equal to N, that means the N value will be equal to Ni and the P value will be also equal to Ni, intrinsic carrier concentration. So if we put N and ND equal to Na here, so uh, ultimately we'll get plus minus root of Ni square. That means plus minus Ni. But the concentration cannot be negative. So that's why we discard this negative root Okay, so this minus sign, so uh, we discard this minus, so only plus will be there, okay. So we discard this minus, only plus will be there, so this is the exact value of uh, the root uh, ni, n value we are getting, okay. And uh, suppose one case where n is very high compared to na, uh, of course, in that case, uh, so the contribution of N is very small compared to the contribution of N D here. You can check this equation if the N A value is very small compared to N D. So ultimately, the, in that case, N will be equal to N D. Okay, N equal to N D. So directly, you can calculate it from mass action law. N P equal to N I square. If the value of N D is very high, then uh, you can directly put N equal to N D. And then you can calculate value of P by using mass action law, that is the minority carrier, n i square by n, using this formula. But uh, it is not applicable when n d is not too much higher compared to n a, then you need to calculate the value of n using this formula. And in the same way, if uh, it is a p-type semiconductor, means uh, we are talking about the situation when your n a is greater than n d, in the same way you can calculate the whole concentration instead of n, it will be p, and the derivation will start from here. So we need to replace n. So n will be replaced by ni square by p, and then it will be placed here, and then you will get one quadratic equation in form of p, and uh, exactly in the same way, you can calculate what will be the value of p. Now let's solve one numerical. So the problem statement is there. You need to find out what is the majority and minority carrier concentration. So electron and hole concentration. So clearly the ND is uh, greater than NA for both case. For both case, so it is the semiconductor is uh, VF like N type. So majorities are electrons and minorities are holes. Okay. So you can apply the previous formula, which we got here. This formula you can apply. Okay. And uh, in the first case, NA is zero. You can check that uh, NA value is zero for first case. And second case, uh, NA value is this one, ND value is this one, and NI value is given. Okay, so the solution is here. Okay, so first case, as I told that since the Na value is zero, so that means Nd is very high compared to Na. So N is nothing but Nd, and we got the same. Our Nd value was 10 to the power 16, and we got N equal to Nd. 
and then applying mass action law you can calculate p is this but for second case we cannot uh, apply this assumption because the value of n and value of na and nd they are uh, almost in the same range you check uh, for second case it is 2 into 10 to the power 15 and this is 5 into 10 to the power 15 so we cannot apply this the assumption this assumption we cannot apply we need to apply the formula see the concentration we are getting 3 into 10 to the power 15 so clearly we cannot apply the assumption because as per assumption it will be 5 into 10 to the power 15 but we are getting 3 into 10 to the power 15 and this is the exact answer so the minority carrier concentration can be calculated using mass action law and the same thing you can do that is if uh, you if the semiconductor is a p type if n n a is greater than nd so similar type of numerical you can solve uh, just by placing p in uh, okay in place of n okay as i told earlier okay. in that way you can calculate the free electron and hole concentration in a doped semiconductor which is both n type and p type doped. but listen one thing uh, this type of assumption or whatever the derivation we are doing so here we assume one thing that uh, all the donors and acceptors are fully ionized that means uh, if you are adding uh, 10 to the power 15 number of donors or 10 to the power 15 number of acceptors all 10 to the power 15 number of free electrons or holes are generated okay that is called fully ionized okay so all those derivations are valid for that case only so today up to this